Today is Kirsten Nielsen's last day as Homeland Security Secretary, and Nielsen and her defenders are already undertaking a reputational rehab project. As Politico puts it, one that casts her not as an enabler of the president's most controversial immigration policies, but as a guardrail against even more extreme action. Ah, yes. But for me, things would have gotten really bad. Good thing I was there on the inside to restrain the president's worst impulses. It's a risible as it is pathetic. Nielsen was the, only, was the one who not only signed off on child separation, but signed off on it knowing what it would do because she herself had reservations about it if the reporting is to be believed. And then she's the one who went out and not only implemented it, but lied to the American people over and over again. She lied to us about what was happening in the first place. The children are not being used as a pawn. We are trying to protect the children, which is why I'm asking Congress to act. She lied about the rationale that it was a deterrent, and she attempted to have us all believe that what was plainly happening in front of our faces was not happening in front of our faces. And then she got snide and defensive and condescending and angry when anyone challenged her on it. Are you intending for this to play out as it is playing out? Are you intending for parents to be separated from their children? Are you intending to send a message? I, I find that offensive. Well, no, because why, why would I ever create a policy that purposely does that? Perhaps it's a deterrent. No. It's says it was a deterrent. The, the way that it works, that it was a deterrent. The, that's not the question that you asked me. No one made her do that. She could have walked away and resigned in protest, but she chose to stay and do all of that. So if her reputation is in tatters, well, that's on her. She made those choices. She's a grown-up, and now she has to go out into the world. And the question is, how will the world receive her? That's really an open question. Because we've lived through a George W. Bush administration in which someone like John Yoo wrote a legal memo that facilitated the U.S. implementing torture, which is a war crime. John Yoo wrote a memo saying that certain kinds of torture didn't actually legally count as torture. And he gave it to Jay Bybee, who signed off on it, and then our country tortured people. According to the Senate's CIA torture report, waterboarding as a series of near drownings, sleep deprivation for up to a week, unnecessary rectal feeding and death threats. And Bybee and Yu became infamous in the moment for their torture advocacy, but guess where they are now? John Yu has a nice tenured perch at Berkeley Law School of all places. John Yu, torture architect, dodging through drum circles on his way to class. And Jay Bybee, what happened to him? Oh, he's a federal judge for life. No recrimination. They paid no price for their complicity in war crimes. The question now becomes, will Nielsen pay a reputational, social, professional price for ripping thousands of children from their parents' arms with no plan to track and reunite them? For imposing this cruelty and trauma on thousands of blameless children? Or is everyone in polite society and establishment in Washington just going to welcome her back with open arms because she was doing her best? Now, to be clear, I don't think she should be necessarily heckled in every Mexican restaurant she goes to for the rest of her life but she should face some sanction and opprobrium. Because if elite institutions and corporate America simply welcomes her back, then in the same way that I'm not so sure we won't torture again, I'm not sure we won't rip children from their mother's arms again. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.